So you can see that we have been using variables g, h, i, t0, t1. There are infinite possibilities of giving a name to a variable. It does not mean that we have infinite possible locations in computer to store those values. There are specific locations where we can store. And for arithmetic operations, we have uh, a smaller memory called register uh, where we store these values. So RIS-5 has 32 times 32-bit register file, which means that there are 32 such locations where we can store a value of up to 32 bits. Okay, So you have already seen how to represent number 1, 2, 3, and 4 bits, 8 bits, 16 bits. So whenever we have to store 1 or 2 or 3 as a data, that will be stored in 32 bits in registers. Okay. So previous versions of the book follow 64-bit pattern, but because of uh, the complexity, they have reduced it down to 32-bit. And we are following this version, so we will restrict to our discussion to 32-bit only. But if you want to discuss 64-bits, there are some other additional instructions um, specifically for 64-bit versions, which will not be discussed in these slides, but they are present on my other lecture slides, which I have posted on my website already. OK, so use it is used for frequently accessed data. So first of all, there are 32 general purpose registers. And their names are x0, x1, x2, and x31. OK? Everything in computer is number. OK? Whether it's uh, data, data is also a number. Whether it's an instruction itself, add a0, b0, 20, whatever, they are all represented as numbers. We will be talking about it later, how to convert that instruction into a number. Where the instruction is stored, the address is also a number. Where the data is stored is also a number. Just like this classroom has an address 305, similarly, every data or every instruction has an address. So these are actually the name, or simply you can call it the address of the values will be stored in these locations. So the design principle number two, uh, which is being followed in this RISC-V architecture, is the smaller is faster. We could choose to have more than 32 register, maybe 64, 128, or 512, OK? But keeping the number less will help us perform operations faster. It's just like, let me take an analogy of like if you are given a task to find a book on the table from the pile of books, would it be faster to find a book on the table, or would it be faster to find a book anywhere in the library? Of course, the library size is bigger. It will take time to find the data and retrieve it to wherever you want to process it, wherever you want to read it on your desk. OK? So we usually have main memory, millions of locations. And usually, this main memory is not a part of the processor. It is usually outside the processor. OK? So where you store the data, like your computer data, Mostly, it is stored in a main memory, which is outside the processor. And what you are currently dealing with, like for example, you have written a while loop or a for loop, and then you have an incrementer in the while or for loop, like i equals i plus 1. So that is an immediate value that is uh, consecutively accessed. So it is usually stored in registers. So generally, all arithmetic operations are performed within register. Even if your data is stored in a memory, main memory, that data is being retrieved from memory and first stored in registers, and then the operation is performed. OK? So this is the registers uh, structure. We have uh, dedicated registers for specific purposes, like x0. It is used to hold the constant value 0. Now, you might be wondering why it is occupying 32 bits just to represent 0. There, there is it's a, have a high significance, which you will get to see in next slides. So you do not need to store the 0 elsewhere. You can just retrieve it from the register called x0. Similarly, x1 contains the return address. So you have been writing functions. So you write the definition of a function in Python, and then you call a function. So when you call a function, it jumps to a certain location, executes certain piece of instructions, and then jump back to the place where the function was called from, right? That is called the return address, where it is supposed to be returning back. 
Okay, so it is stored in X1. Similarly, X2 is stack pointer, global pointer, or some different purposes. We will study um, as we proceed ahead. Then we have these registers shown in blue color are for holding temporary values. And for just like in the previous example, we hold um, some temporary registers, intermediate results in these registers. Then we have save register to store the values in here. The function arguments, function results. So when you call a function or uh, when you define a function, what do you think uh, when we call a function, let's say func x is the definition and you are supposed to be passing a value three? Do you think the three value is actually passed to a function? Hmm? When we write a function, let's say def func, for example, and let's say x, and when you call it func three, and we, we have discussed this, this is actually assigned to x. Right? So do you think it is actually passing the values? It does not pass. It just work as a post mailbox, right? It is uh, when you're calling a function, this value, the argument that are supposed to be passed are placed in these arguments register. And when the function start executing, the control knows that it has to obtain the values from these locations. So this is how it is executed. Okay, so if we take the same example again, which we have just discussed, assume that f corresponds to x19, g corresponds to x20, and all the way until j, which corresponds to x23. So the compiler is five code for the first instruction. What would be the first instruction? Add, g and h has to be added. Okay, so g and h, so what two operands you will be adding? So G is stored in where? X20 and H is in X21. So X20, X21 and what is the destination register? It would be any of the temporary registers. Okay, so here in this example it is X5. Okay, so X5, so X20 plus X21, so what will happen is it will go into this register. Whatever the contents stored in X20, it will be grabbed. Similarly, X21, and then the addition perform, addition is performed and the results are stored in here. Okay. Same as the case with I and J, the intermediate results, temporary results are stored in here. And then finally, X5 and X6 are added together and the final results are stored in X19, okay? And the reason why it is, it is called temporary because if any instruction is supposed to be executed with the temporary values, these values can be overwritten. Okay, that's why they are called temporary registers, okay?